Space Ground Saucer Watch Organization. The UFO Research Society says if confirmed, the Mundrabilla incident could become one of the world's most significant UFO reports. In fact, this, this family is very important to us because uh, from what we've been able to establish and what other people have told us, they're not the type who would uh, set up a, uh, a fake. In other words, they're, they're basically not interested in UFOs. They're, they're just coming from Western Australia to Victoria and encountered this, uh, um, uh, this what it could be a UFO or whatever it is, uh, natural, natural phenomena. South Australian police are expected to reveal results of their test later this week. Frank Pangallo, Seven News. Paul Norman and John Octel from the UFO Research Society examined the Blue Ford Telstar said to have been attacked by a UFO a fortnight ago. They carried out a series of tests, including one for electromagnetic activity, then took samples from the car. Veteran UFO investigator Paul Norman says his initial inspection appears to back up the account by the Knowles family that something attacked, then lifted the car off the air highway, causing a tire to blow. I am convinced that they were telling uh, that they were seeing a, of an object of some kind and, uh, and uh, they did interfere with their car. The researchers say they satisfied the report by the Knowles family warrants further investigation. So what we're looking for when we're doing these investigations, looking for um, faults in their story. At this stage we've seen nothing at all. Uh, the, what they've indicated in the car is right. And we found the black material, found the markings, the damage to the car, it's exactly how they said it was. Uh, they also indicated they were doing 200k, which is impossible on the ground for one of these cars, but we did a test here and we've got it up to 200k's with the front wheels jacked up. So it really um, gives the impression that the car was, uh, well, gives the idea the car was actually physically lifted up. Samples taken from the car will be sent to Princeton University astrophysicist Dr. Bruce McAbee for further analysis. However, the results aren't expected to be known for at least a month. Meanwhile, the Knowles family is remaining in hiding in Melbourne. They will undergo a detailed medical examination tomorrow. Members of the family have been forced to seek medical treatment for stress and nervous exhaustion brought about by their terrifying experience. Frank Pangallo, 7 News. Is, and whatever category Western Australia's Knowles family fell into last week, well, you can bet that they're true believers now. Their close encounter took place early yesterday morning on the Nullarbor Plain, an area notorious for sightings, but never anything this physical. Thanks very much for joining us from Adelaide. Patrick, let me ask you first, can you explain to us what really did happen? What happened? Uh, this is where it... Well, we're going along the I Highway in between. It was kind of like on the border of South Australia and Western Australia. We're driving along there, and uh, we are just in normal speed and that, and I was a bit tired, Sean, Sean and Mum way more awake. And we noticed this light ahead of us, and we thought, oh, that's a truck, you know. We all thought that, actually, at first. And it started to get a bit, uh, a bit closer. But this is strange, and it kind of disappeared like it went off the road. And it seemed to, you know, kind of fade and jump about a bit. And as we got closer, it just, just kind of seemed to move away. And when, when we got closer, it just kind of come back in towards us. All right, so what happened then? Well, we just kept on driving, and it kind of disappeared. Next minute, you know, it was right behind us. And my brother started planting his foot. He must have been doing at least 200 k's, and it just started to follow him. So, Sean, you were driving. What did you do? Uh, I planted my foot right down and I got up to about 200 kilometres. 200 kilometres an hour you are driving at that yeah. speed? What was going through your mind? I was hoping to get away from the thing. And we seen it in front of us again. So I turned back and the next minute it was up the hills flying. And so I turned back again. I had a look behind us to see if, see if it was still up there. It was still up there. And the next second, it was on the roof. It was on the roof of your car? It was on the roof of the car. And as soon as it was on the roof, my back tyre blew out at 200 kilometres an hour. All right, so what and happened then? As soon as, soon as the car stopped, I just blinked out. And that's all on a... All right. What, what about the rest of you? We were screaming and yelling and... We didn't know what to do, you know. We were under the windows, all this black mist, misty, like a smoke and a light, and 
we all felt really strange. Our voice started changing and and everything just went really, really weird. You say your voices started changing. Yeah, what? you don't. Yeah. Oh, it started to sound like aliens or something. Like it was uh, drain, mm -hmm. draining our minds. Was, it was really weird. <laughs> Wayne, what, what was happening? What, what were your thoughts at that particular time? Oh, we were going to die. Were you saying anything to each other that you could understand? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Adeline, I said, I'm going to get you, all. That's the, what I said. All right. Can, can any of you describe exactly, or as closely as you can, what this looked like? Oh. It was sort of shaped like this and had a round, what's the name, looked like it was a uh, yellow and on the side of it looked like it had sort of bird wings and it's weird. All right. Look, could you understand, uh, some Australians, maybe a lot of Australians, may not, may not quite believe, they sure, they could understand that you're shocked, they could understand that you, you were tired, but they may not quite no, believe that's not what true. you're telling us. I don't care, but we, that's what happened to us. You see, if they don't <coughs> want to believe it, it's up to them, but if it ever happens to them, then and if it, it ever comes on, <laughs> then they'll believe it. So what do you think now about we, what happened to you? We don't really know what happened, you know? What do I think? We well, thought we were going to die. Well, what I think, you know, is I'll be, I'm not saying believe me, don't believe me, I'm just saying, you know, it happened to us and that's... It that's did happen to say. us. And uh, there was a couple of truckies that did say us, they didn't stop for us, they sent us run out the bushes to try to call them over. They would not stop for us because they thought we were abos or something, because out in the bush you're not going to stop for anyone, are you? Alright, you're in Adelaide now, you're on your way to Melbourne, mm. when do you head back to Perth? In two weeks time. You're driving back? No, so. we're not. No way. You're not going to? Like no? I said, I don't know what's going to happen with the car. What do you mean, what's going to happen with like the car? Like it could have radiation in the car. But somebody suggested that to you, haven't yes. they? Yes. So and there's another thing. There's two guys from America. If they didn't believe this, now explain this. There's two guys from America would have come in down here to suss the car out. All right, so what you're saying to us is that you're too scared to drive back That's across right. the Nullarbor Plain after That's what true. happened to you? Yeah, terrified. So you're going by train, eh? Yeah. Okay, well, we wish you all the best and we thank you very much for talking to us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, well, and uh, let's hope they get to the bottom of the mystery. Thanks for joining so. us. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. We'll be back in just a moment.